Oh boy, are we ready for this? Mac T Ford Edge Live. Let's get started. Hey folks, welcome back to Mac T Ford Edge Live. And again, we're back on the group page and uh, we want to start right out as we always do welcoming the new members uh, we're in the 30s or so for this last week and of course uh going back we got uh Nivelle, um michael another michael freddie mole samed jeffrey dan uh sothera kevin clo marlene uh michelle christopher scott james sean Ashley, Amara, Steve, another Michael, Randy, uh, Jane, and uh, Taiwo, Joseph, Andrea, Wes, Stephen, Sang, Jim, Rangu, and Jay are all our new members for this last week. Uh, glad to have you on here. I think uh, I think our intros are second to none for anybody joining the group. So uh, you know, by all means, uh, pass it on. We like to make sure everybody feels welcome. So we work hard at that. Now, uh, onwards to the group activities. There are a lot of folks doing a lot of things this week, and of course, uh, you guys saw some of the stuff I was doing. But let's cover what some of the other group members are doing uh, with their Edge MKX. And uh, by all means, uh, we got plenty of photos going out there. Uh, we got the Wedding Crasher, a.k.a. Steven. Uh, he seems to be crashing a lot of those. Free beer and drink. What the heck, right? Uh, well, one day we'll see him in a jail cell or something. <laughs> Who knows? But anyway, uh, how do you turn off? We got a recent question from Carlos about how to turn off the oil or low tire pressure warning light simple carlos put air in the tires <laughs> uh, all joking aside you may be the batteries on a tpms are low so you might want to take and uh, trade out those tpms i think they say they run between five to eight years or something and then they go dead so then you have no choice but to replace the TPMS. And I will add that if you have the banded type, don't buy those. Just buy the, the uh, tire stem or valve stem ones to replace them. They're far cheaper. So uh, go that route. Uh, looks like you got like 123000 on a first gen edge there. So uh, I would say it, yeah, it's time for some t new TPMS sensors. And if you did trade out your wheels, there's no way to turn it off. Maybe through Forescan but the dealer won't do it because it's a safety measure so don't even ask uh let's see what else we got uh cam was worried about the valve train and i posted up uh, one of my videos on it uh yes the three five and three seven are noisy beasts so uh the ticking and clacking is a uh, part of the deal to a point okay if it gets really really loud then you got some serious issues but uh yeah, normal ticking yeah, that's that's the uh, the injectors and valve train and everything else. The Duratec is not a silent engine, folks. Uh, that might be part of the reason for the engine covers to try to muffle the sound. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got Chris. He's out wandering junkyards, uh, looking at stripped Ford edges, and it's somewhat similar to what I do. And yes, they they go in and they strip them hard once they get them because those parts are valuable. So uh, they that that uh, Bammer's intact yet I would have grabbed that. That is a pricey piece of glass there. So uh, that would have been a good grab just in case, right? So you know you would sell it if nothing else. Who knows? People pay big money for those things. Uh, let's see. We got uh, Rodney. He found out the windshield washer nozzles on his edge do get brittle and fall apart we've all seen that i've done a video on that so it's a pretty simple process just buy the new ones and then you'll be well on your way to clean bug free windshields again uh let's see what else we got we got james he has gotten rid of his edge and it looks like he got an explorer and an f-150 what a trade wow 
Uh, gee, maybe I should do that, huh? I don't think so. <laughs> but hey, you know, whatever it is, if you guys buy another vehicle or whatever, he's saying, well, I'm going to see y'all. Uh, and I've lost my connection. Let's see if we get back. There we go. We got the connection back. And, uh, of course, uh, that does happen with this once in a while. But anyway, as I was saying, James, uh, you know, and anybody that leaves the group, we got a lot of members that bought other vehicles that stay in it. I think it's our charming personalities. What do you think? Anyway, I think we are a good group of people, and we try to keep everything uh, Ford Edge focused and try to make sure everybody plays nice, right? Yes, that's really the whole thing. We treat it like family, and therefore uh, we hope you all do too. Uh, and let's see what else I posted up a new banner picture a Ford Edge and it looks like a Ford Fusion good good couple we got many people have a Ford Edge and a Ford Fusion always a good mix between mileage and, and fun right so anyway we have that going on and we got uh, various pictures of various things people see uh, here we had a lot of Lincoln MKTs being posted up uh, limos and, and vehicles and such, uh, MKT, bit bit of a different creature, and quite frankly, I think it's uh, just a, I don't know, it, it looks like the rear end of a horse. I, I'm not, it would not be a vehicle I'd buy. Uh, they need to redesign that thing big time. <laughs> I don't even see many of them on the road, so uh, that tells you how their sales are going on that one, so that one might be a refresh here. Uh, for the future, which I hear they're going to make it look like the, uh, the the Land Rover or something like that, uh, which has a lot of history, folks. Uh, Ford tested their uh, diesel engine they're putting in the F-150s in the Land Rover over in Europe, and thus it makes sense that maybe the MKT might bear resemblance to the Land Rover in a refresh uh, just because of the platform they're using, so, you know little bit of news for you there uh, what else we got we got chase he had that unfortunate accident and now he has his uh, old wheels up for sale so if you're looking for a good deal on wheels negotiate with him he's put the price out you know for whatever it is uh, I not paying attention at 100 percent here but uh, private messaging get a deal going you have some wheels that are in pretty decent shape and then, of course, you can roll on down the road in style there. What else do we have? Uh, a lot of folks putting in uh, new cameras and in backup cameras and all this other stuff. Uh, getting those lines uh, lined up. Making sure you buy an OEM camera. Uh, some of these aftermarket ones are proven to be a problem. So uh, whatever you do, make sure it's an OEM correct part and then it should work for you and uh, shouldn't have too much of a problem uh, let's see we got uh, people covering their cars up due to paint that makes sense doesn't it and then we got uh, dam yes d-a-m he uh, has his black uh, 1.5 gen uh, edge that he's taking some wheels off of, uh, let's see a flex and put them on his edge and now he has the uh, other wheels left uh, I would be extremely interested to see what those aluminum wheels look like under those chrome caps uh, different style wheel I'd just be interested to see what they look like so if you do decide to remove the chrome caps damn watch my videos and uh, you'll see how easy it is to remove them does not take a lot of work clean them up let's show us what the actual aluminum wheel looks like Maybe powder coat them or paint them. You might have a good set of wheels there uh, that you can use for winter, summer, whatever you decide to do. Uh, let's see. Alan, 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 you got your power uh, brake booster replaced uh, because it was faulty under warranty that I saw. And the problem is you went and started uh, using it and it's making this... Uh, you know vacuuming sound which tells me that maybe they messed it up yes anytime you get anything from a, a dealer you make sure you test drive it before you pay them okay make sure they fixed it don't take their word for it 
tell them, hey, send somebody with me. We're going for a drive. We're going to make sure that it got fixed. Be a good consumer, folks, okay? You want to be a good consumer. So, uh, you know, and dealers got to work with you. You know, you just don't say, okay, it's fixed and head out the door. If you're uncertain, make sure you get a test drive. Tell them, I, I want to test drive before I pay you. You can go with me, whatever you want. We're going to test drive it, okay? Uh, just hand you the keys and say, hey, you're fixed. You know, maybe that works for some of you, but it doesn't always work, right? So make sure you do pay attention to that. And, of course, whatever you do, uh, be that good consumer, okay? I'm not saying being mean. I'm just saying let's trust but verify. So that's all you really need to do there. Uh, let's see. Ika, you are... You are living in the oven. That's all I can say. 133.5 degrees. Holy cow. Uh, people die there. What kind of sunscreen do you use? Like grease? Holy cow, that's a hot temperature. I, don't know, I wouldn't be outside. I'd be like hiding in the refrigerator like that video. But anyway, we do have uh, Theago. You got an ECU, as you said, or PCM, uh, you know, DTC. And I'm going to tell you that you got to check your charging system out. Uh, electrical does really weird things when it doesn't have enough power in your battery. So make sure that battery is good. And you said it's a 14, which means that battery is nearly thir three years old. And a lot of motorcraft batteries, by the time they get to three years old, they start taking the trip south. Yes. So you want to check that and your charging system. Make sure that alternator is working. Uh, verify the power first. Don't think your PCM's dead. Uh, you know, it could be just as simple as a battery that's bad, or you know, worst case, an alternator. Uh, but both are far cheaper than a PCM and less headaches. So uh, double check that for us. Make sure that that is the case. Let's see. Let's see. We got some other folks doing things. Oh. You guys did see uh, I posted a picture up uh, since I ran across it. And yes, folks, my Lou has got some serious cancer going on under the lip on the uh, whole seam all the way around the bottom. Uh, I did do a video on what I'm doing to try to slow it down. And I think it may w work. I really do. I, uh, I've been working on it. And I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. If I go through and, and do car washes, I'll re-lube it up a little bit. But this stuff's supposed to stick in pretty good. Uh, but I'm going to keep that cleaned up with that. Uh, and I'll show you what I did in the video. And hopefully that does extend the life. I'm not stopping it, folks. There's no way to stop rust. It's there. And once it's there, it's there. Uh, but you can try to slow it down. And that's what I'm working at and trying to work towards is slowing the rust down rather than stopping it. Uh, because, quite frankly, one day Lou is going to call it quits. That's all there is to it. When it happens, I don't know, but we're going to keep running her hard until, until she falls over. And then, then we'll go from there. But uh, we'll just keep moving on. Uh, let's see. We have a couple other things. Ambient lights change. Uh, you're going to have your standard entry light color when you go into your edge. And then, of course, once you start it, uh, I think your choice of colors will then pop up. Once you put that key in the ignition and shut the door, you'll get all the funny, you know, fun, rather, color lights that you want to do. Uh, people get them to strobe or whatever. I don't know. That'd be distracting for me. But anyway, let's see. Willie. Willie is trying to get something, and I'm going to put this out here. Willie M. O'Neill down in Florida is trying to get a Mac T Ford Edge Lincoln MKX Facebook group meeting together, folks. And just let me tell you, if you do show up to meet up with Willie, uh, maybe he has something for you. Don't know. You got to meet up with Willie to find out because Willie's going to have it for you. So uh, I'll just throw that out there. Willie, you got the show there, bud. So whatever you do. Uh, make sure everybody shows up. They can, and we'll, of course, get them hooked up there. But uh, also look forward to any uh, video or Facebook Live, anything you guys do when you get together. It would be great to see a little snippet or two of another group in another region meeting together 
in camaraderie, folks. Yes, we all got things in common on this group, and that is a Ford Edge Lincoln MKX. And that is what we always want to do. And meet new nice people. Yes. Everybody seems nice. So, you know, let's, let's just keep it rolling with that because I really enjoy meeting everybody. And that's my, my big thing. I love meeting people. And I've met a lot of people, you know, throughout the year or two that I've been doing this, helping them with their edges, everything else. So uh, let's just keep on banking it forward and, and uh, carrying on. Let's see, what else do we got? Let's see. Oh, CB lost her tooth. That little girl's growing up. She's starting to have them fall out right and left. She's going to be eating soup before long. But anyway, yes, you've seen her in the videos, and she is, uh, yeah, she's going through that process, losing them teeth. Can't whistle very good anymore, but in pronunciation of certain letters are very hard. <laughs> but hey, I love her to death. Anyway, she always comes to me to pull them out. I'm the tooth puller. Anyway, I do it gently. I don't make it terrible on her. But anyway, trivia. I did post trivia question. And of course, we got it right on there after a couple of minutes. And uh, it was, what Ford engine design influenced the design of the 2.7 EcoBoost? And that was uh, something that I was doing some research on. And I did not know that the 6.7 diesel engine designed by Ford to replace the 6.0 and everything else that was a catastrophe, uh, that they utilized the design principles and the materials that they used to make the 6.7 to create the 2.7. That means the engine block design and everything else. And all your new Ford engines come with what we call a compacted graphite uh, iron, okay? Uh, and what that is, metallurgical senses, is it gives more durability, more strength uh, with, the, with the mix of the alloys together to create a very good, hard, stable, and durable engine block. And it's not the old days where it's just cast iron and is worn out after 70,000 miles. These things are designed to run under high pressure and high forces for a long time. So uh, that was pretty much the development of what they did because of the boost of the turbos. They had to have a strong engine block. And it all starts with diesels because diesels have a lot of compression pressure too. So if you didn't know what, then you know that it came from there. And that's how that all materialized. And then, of course, we also had a little notice from me on, uh, you know, I got word from a person that I tend to talk to fairly often uh, that a 2.7, uh, I think is a 2016 uh, Ford Edge Sport with a 2.7 uh, come rolling into the, into the shop and she was running rough, folks. And uh, apparently had connecting rod or something, the engine was blown, okay? And we're talking, I think they said uh, 3,000 kilometers on the engine. It was toast. Yeah, that, that's quick. So uh, as word got to me, uh, basically that engine's going back to Ford. They want to figure out what caused that thing to blow and uh, get it figured out for more development or for future engines. So, uh, yeah, hey, sometimes when you make more horsepower, you're going to pay the price ultimately in the long run and uh, sometimes we we have to deal with that so what else we got uh, got Vanessa she uh, posted that she's got an issue with her shift interlock it basically her cable is what I'm getting at it has the shift shift cable okay is done for and it needs to be replaced and it's causing other problems the shift lever may need to be replaced uh, it looks like she's overriding it manually, like the, you know, to the interlock to release the uh, lock to put it in neutral like they do when they get a tow truck driver to push it backwards or, or any other maintenance function where they can't get it to shift because they don't have the keys or something like that. Uh, just keep in mind that this system that you're using, Vanessa, is not made for operation on a regular basis, okay? By doing that, you're going to cause additional damage, and uh, and it just goes downhill from there. Sometimes 
in order to save money you got to put money up front to fix the the problem so that it doesn't become a more expensive problem down the road and you know that this is just one case so that may be the problem so uh, I wish you the best of luck in there I told you what uh, my suggestions is on that so hopefully you can get that fixed uh, let's see Mario decided he wanted to post a police cruiser Ford Explorer at a barbecue uh, I'm not sure what the deal was there but it looks like it was a pretty hot time uh, anyway watch the video you can see the police car on fire it's a Ford Explorer and uh, you know no story no backstory and why it started or anything but uh, again that's where it's at let's see uh, Paolo uh, he's wanting to figure out how to take the front clip off in other words the whole front bumper cover and grill uh, a lot of clips just follow the clips pull on them undo any screws and just start uh, popping any push pins out and anything else and then of course wiring connectors for your uh, lights and everything else will have to be disconnected you may want to have two people it makes it a little easier to work with and then eventually you pop it out and then you can remove the grill and have it separate and then paint but keep in mind if you have a front camera you're gonna have to make sure you disconnect that and all that good stuff that goes with that uh, a lot of little wires there you might have to work with but hey I look forward to your final product to see what you did you're painting it black I'm assuming so I'm really looking forward to seeing what your final job is on that and that reminds me, I still have to work on my front grill and uh, get that done here eventually, hopefully before it gets too cold. Uh, but I will tell you, I'm getting it professionally painted because I just don't have the time and I want it to look decent. You know, I, my last paint job on my wheels, yeah, okay, I'm an amateur. You know, let's just leave it at that. Uh, sometimes you got to stick with what you know, right? Let's see, we had uh, Ollie. He was trying to figure out what kind of automatic transmission fluid to use. And we recommend it, Ollie, you stick with the Motocraft. That Golden Stallion, Stallion stuff, I'm not entirely sure is the right stuff, okay? If in doubt, stick with Motocraft. That way you don't make the wrong choice. So uh, if you got a first-gen Edge, Mercon V. If you got a second-gen, Mercon LV. And then, of course, I think it's LV for the second-gen. And I think the new transmission, uh, it may be a another type of Mercon. Yes, I think they're going to come out with a thinner Mercon transmission fluid for the new transmission. So be ready to have a third type of transmission fluid used in your Ford Edge for the newer models once they come out with the new transmission. What else do we got going on here? Uh, Wendy, you put out that you got some uh, brake noise and uh, folks I've already made videos on this and I can't stress this enough just because your rotor on the outside looks smooth clean and and pristine this the horror story is in the back yes the inside part or surface of the rotor that is closest inboard to the car on all four wheels can look like a horror show okay of rust corrosion pitting garbled up everything else the outsides look perfect so the only true way you're gonna have your brakes inspected is they have to remove the rotors to look that means they have to remove the caliper and the brackets and then pull the rotor off to look you can't really tell until you get it off because it's so close in there so my word to wise if they say yeah we inspected and what they say visual says how did you inspect the inside of the rotors without pulling them off it's that simple folks in this case they gotta pull them off because you can't tell very well at all what the condition is you just can't so uh, don't don't believe them don't believe them if they said they did a visual and you and they're good and they still get grinding noise inside of the rotors folks guarantee it that will be your problem let's see Jan King's been out driving through the national parks, city parks, and every other park he can find. And the last I heard, he had mounted patrols and people on four-wheel drive. And I lost the signal again. Holy cow. This is an intermission, folks. Stand by for the commercial right now. Music will play.
Hopefully it comes back. I don't know what's going on. The Facebook Live is down. Uh, so we're going to just talk about anything but everything. Maybe it'll pop back up. There we go. We're back again. Nice commercial intermission for everybody. Uh, for whatever reason, I'm having problems here uh, staying connected. Uh, but rest assured, the video that I'll post on YouTube will be in continuity with everything. And we move on. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk to everybody about was, uh, you know, the uh, Facebook, uh, I guess, you know, I want to say it's Facebook Focus, Ford Edge Focus Point, okay? Uh, Ford Edge, Lincoln MKX Focus, okay? I want to focus on you folks, the group members and your edges. You know, just take a video, turn your phone sideways, not up portrait size but landscape uh, make a video with your phone three minutes I've established an upload link on the group page to take and send your video on it's a Microsoft OneDrive uh, you upload the videos if you do it in segments don't feel bad I can put it together just make sure you name the segments so I can put them together and then I can figure it out from there and then I can edit it and put it in here I want to do it for this Facebook Live thing when I put it on YouTube. For example, you do the video, say, hey, Mac T Group, this is my Ford Edge. This is uh, 2011. It's uh, orange in color, my favorite color. Uh, as leather seats. These are the mods that I did. Look, I put in a Kai. I went and uh, deleted some aspects of the result, put a cat back in it. Listen to it run. Listen to the power. Uh, I put LED lights on it. I updated Do this in three minutes, little short segments. I can put it together, do a Ford Edge Lincoln MKX focus point. Okay, make it a video. And then I will put it into this group right here. And right now I say, now stand by for group member in their video. And I'll let it play for three minutes. Okay, and then I'll come back to you say welcome back what did you think of that Ford Edge from whoever it may have been and then we go on to the rest of the show I want you all to participate so upload your video and no folks somebody uploaded a baby's video onto it I kid you not I don't know if I got the you know the, the approval to do it but it was a baby playing with a dog okay so I know it can be done I know you the group members can do it because I got the baby with the puppy dog on my upload page on the OneDrive. Yes, so I know it can be done. And uh, let's get this rolling, okay? I did not have anything for this Sunday. I'm hoping to have something for next Sunday. So let's just try to get that ball rolling, folks. Now, moving on, since the Facebook Live has shut down on me again, uh, we're gonna keep moving on here. Uh, let's see, Todd uploaded a TSB on a Ford F-150 that has some problems going on with it so we're gonna you know go over that here maybe in the future too and what else do we got we got oil leak yes for some re some reason an oil pan was leaking on Lawrence's uh, Ford Edge and he took it in and they went ahead and did everything free of charge free oil change and they put the oil pan back on nice and tight so it don't leak so uh, Lawrence has got a you know bonus thing going on and then the 2.7s have been having a lot of leaks in their oil pans. Uh, we've also been getting something really strange. We've been getting a lot of oil pressure sending units starting to leak. Not only on the older edges, but we're also newer edges. It's really strange, but it seems like we're getting a rash of those. So is this a manufacturing issue where they don't put them in right? They wear out fast. But we've been getting quite a few of those here lately. And uh, it seems to be a little weak link there. Uh, let's see. What else we got? Uh, folks, pretty busy. Uh, Ford Edge in a parade. And then, of course, uh, let's see, I did the rear shock video and everything else, and you guys can watch that on YouTube. Now, I'm going to come back on it for YouTube, and uh, as with all things, uh, I do want to let you all know that Mac T Ford Edge on YouTube has surpassed 1 million views. Yes, that's not for one video, but total accumulated videos since I started a little over two years ago making videos on the Ford Edge. Uh, 
it has now surpassed 1 million viewers. Yes, you folks. You folks have been watching 1 million times. So uh, there's 1 million views over that now. And well over and approaching, I think, is 4.5 million minutes of view time. So the, the YouTube channel is growing, and I think it's doing pretty good considering it's so focused on the Edge and the MKX. You know, that's all really the videos are. So you got to stop and think. They sell, you know, 300,000 Edges a year, or whatever it is, maybe four. Uh, you know, it's, you know, that's a lot of folks looking to fix their Ford Edge and Lincoln MKX. So I'm happy you all helped me out by watching those videos. And, you know, when you get a shot, when you watch it, do this for me. Okay? That's all I want. That's the payment. Just hit the like button. And then, of course, uh, that will definitely help give me the oomph to make more videos, as I always try to do. Let's see, what else do we got? Oh, upcoming video. Yes, upcoming video. If you did not know how to do your resonator delete yourself, uh, that is the next video coming out. Yes, be ready for it. And I will, I'm finishing up a few little tweaks. I got to go out and get some more video footage. Uh, before I finalize it, but the main part of it's done. How to do it, I'm just getting some speed runs and some other stuff I want to do in motion and all this. I got a new stand to suction cup onto my edge, so you know I'm gonna try hooking the GoPro up and getting some of that fancy stuff done. Uh, but you know, it's all fun, but it takes time, and I got to get that time to do that uh, so that we can have a good video out of the deal. So that's what I'm working on right now. Yes, I know I'm going in and out, in and out. I don't know why. I don't know why this is happening. But anyway, that is it. I'm going to go on to what I was truly going to talk about. And this is, of course, going to be SSM 46253 Oil Pressure Sensor Leak 2015 model year uh, Ford Edges with the... Uh, here is it's going to be the 2.0 uh, gasoline turbocharged direct injection engine, 2015-16 Mustang and the F-150 5.0 and the 2016 Explorer equipped with the 2.3 uh, GTDI engine may exhibit oil leaks. There is an SSM on it, okay? Uh, it's not required to replace the sensor if it's leaking. Uh, just remove and reseal it. Okay, that's really what they're saying to do. Uh, check the oil level and everything else. But apparently we have a manufacturing fault. When they made these, they did not torque them in tight enough and they're leaking oil now. This is really all this is. But it is an SSM on this and I did read off the number to you. So, you know, make sure you do, of course, check that out if you do have a Ford Edge with the 2.0 then, of course, that SSM is nothing more than a quick fix, okay? You will probably have to pay for it to be repaired, uh, but uh, by all means, get it checked because a engine without oil is not good either. Then, what do we got here? We have another SSM 46281 for the 2015 model years, use and care in removing the engine cover, okay? Uh, the 2015 through 17 Edge MKX Escape MKC Fusion MKZ and Explorers equipped with the 2.0 or the 2.3 may get damaged to the engine appearance cover when removing it. And of course, valve cover or intake manifold while attempting to remove the appearance cover. Uh, to reduce the possibility of your damage, uh, you got to carefully pull it straight forward. You can't pull it to the side or up. You got to pull it forward towards you when you're removing. Uh, let's see. No, wait. Uh, excuse me. I totally redid this. I read it wrong. Holy cow, I'm giving out bum dope. Okay. Uh, carefully pull straight upward on the underside of the cover at each fastener location. So you grab it and you pull it straight up. Okay, do not pull it forward. Yes, or to the side. You got to pull it straight up, folks. Uh, bum dope bill here. Yeah, backwards. Pull straight up. Pull straight up. Yes, 
remember that pull straight up that way you won't damage it okay so and if you do anything else you're going to cause damage to the cover and then you're going to say oh i broke it but the other thing they are saying to do when you do put those little pops back into the engine cover there to seat it in place use brake caliper grease on those little knobs and then push it down that way it comes back out next time so grease it up a little bit and if you got it and you want to do it now you can go do it but make sure you do grease those little holders a little bit so that they can pop out really easy again pull up got to make amends on that holy cow read it wrong anyway what else do we got we got another SSM and this one is uh, SSM 46341 2015 2.7 and 3 liter EcoBoost crankshaft pulley reinstallation update. When you're servicing your 2.7 or 3 liter EcoBoost engine, uh, if the crankshaft pulley is removed, correct reassemble, reassembly is critical to prevent potential engine, engine failure. Holy cow! Uh, this includes installing a new crankshaft pulley bolt. Yeah, you can't reuse the old one and accurately performing each stage of the crankshaft, crankshaft pulley bolt torque sequence. I'm going to say this is a stretchy bolt and what they're saying is you're going to have to torque it down to a certain torque according to the workshop manual and then you're going to have to go down and then probably torque it down in, uh, in a set of uh, degrees. Okay, They might say like torque it down to 100 foot pounds. I'm just saying example wise, look the numbers up yourself. Uh, but uh, once you do torque it down to the set perimeters that they set, uh, you know, I would say it's probably 89 if I was to guess. Everything seems to be 89 foot pounds. But uh, you torque it down, or inch pounds, whatever it may be. Uh, but you torque it down, and then more than likely, just like your uh, intake cover, you torque it down to whatever foot pounds you got to do there, and then you got to go by 45 or 90 degrees more. Uh, and that's what you got to do here. So you're going to want to make sure you get a new bolt if you're going to be messing with that and of course remove that. So that is your other SSM. And then I do have, uh, let's see, I have a TSB. And I do want to cover this TSB 16-0094. Knocking and tapping noise at a high pressure fuel pump for the 2015 2.7 EcoBoost engines. Some of the 2015 and 16 e Edge and MKX vehicles equipped with the 2.7 EcoBoost engine and built on October 29, 2015 through January, February, March, April 1st of 2016 uh, may exhibit a knocking and tapping noise that can be heard in the fuel feed tube that attaches to the high pressure fuel pump on the engine. Okay. This may be due to a loose check valve located in the fuel feed tube. Follow TSB service procedures and steps to correct it. So you go through, get the TSB, and they, of course, go through and repair this and replace a part. They might be uh, taking and uh, removing something off of there. So, But this TSB does uh, exhibit and demonstrate that the, if you have a fuel pump that's making a knocking or a tapping noise, uh, they got a way to quiet that down for you. So if you have that problem, take that TSB in there to your dealer, especially if it's under warranty, and they can probably fix that problem too. Uh, it's not a recall, folks. None of these were recalls, so you're going to have to pay out of pocket or with your extended warranty or whatever may cover it for you. But that is a TSB on that one. And, of course, uh, last but not least, this is not a TSB. Uh, that uh, I generally will cover, but uh, this really covers, I think, the 2.7 uh, and GTDI oil consumption uh, for, I think, the F-150 built between 1 April 2016 and 1 January 2017. Uh, some of the vehicles equipped with these uh, Ford uh, F-150s uh, between uh, 1 April 2016 and 1 January 2017 uh, may exhibit white or blue smoke at the exhaust, rough idle in neutral or park or normal operating temperature after a hot start. The vehicle may also exhibit illumination 
malfunction lamps, and of course diagnostic trouble codes of P300, 301, 302, 345, and 6, and 316, along with P524 and or P06DD with excessive oil consumption, okay? And basically what it is is using oil, okay? So uh, they got to go in and they got to take and, of uh, course, replace that. And that covers the 2016-17 F-150. Uh, there may be some relationship to that engine, although it is a d bit different uh, to the 2.7 and the Ford Edge and uh, Lincoln MKX. We don't know, uh, but I'm just covering it just in case. Uh, it may be useful to somebody, or if you got an F-150 with a 2.7, it may be helpful. Uh, that, that's always a case there. Uh, but uh, that was pretty much the SSMs and the TSB I wanted to cover on the, uh, of course, the 2015 model years. Of course, we always keep up with the TSBs as they come around and try to relate them to all of you because you want to know, right? And, of course, hopefully you found this educational in that aspect that, hey, I got that. That's what my problem is. And now you got the TSB to cover it. So you go look that number up, and then you can then, of course, take that to your dealer and say, look, this is what my problem is. And they'll, you know, dealer service manager's like, oh, God, another no at all, right? Uh, but, hey, you never know till you tell them. And sometimes they don't know. They don't even read their own TSBs half the time. So you want to do that. Uh, I do want to cover, we had, of course, some uh, folks getting their vehicles repaired. And I do like the fact that you all help and are kind to each other. And keep that in mind. When somebody says, you know, I, I, it breaks my heart when somebody goes in and says, hey, my transmission's on it, and it's a TSS and OSS sensor deal, and they say, well, they got to buy a whole new transmission. It's going to cost $4,500. Folks, second opinion, please. You're taking a $700 job, and you're going to trash your transmission off and have somebody rip you off for four thousand five hundred bucks that's all it comes down to so let's call them out let's make sure that we keep people honest I want mechanics paid I think they deserve to be paid for the work they do but let's make sure that we have competent people doing the work right and make sure we're not getting ripped off and uh, that's what I don't like to see and that's what really caused me to do all the work that I do myself I could not afford to keep my car running if I went to a dealer every time I had to fix something. It just would be astronomical. And you guys know that I drive the wheels off of that thing. So uh, it is running good, by the way. And, of course, it is almost, uh, this week it will be 210,000 miles. Hey, we're going there, right? But I do appreciate everything you do. Remember, this group page is ran by the rules of kindergarten. If my seven-year-old complains that it's bad, then it is bad. Yes, okay? Uh, that's how it is, folks. I want it to be nice. So, you know, put your nice hat on and say, I'm going to be nice to everybody today. Okay? I uh, don't want to have conflicts in that. This is a Ford Edge MKX group. Let's keep it focused and, and keep it enjoyable. So I do appreciate you all working hard to hold back the reins on how maybe you normally respond to stuff. That's fine. You can go respond to other groups like that. That's fine. But this one we want to keep there. So that's my perch. Uh, I'll be running, running across a few issues lately. And I just want everybody to know that. So again, Facebook. This Facebook group, if you guys are going to want to get a hold of me, Facebook is where to do it. And of course, if you're on YouTube, uh, keep in mind YouTube subscribers, if you do want to get a hold of me, you got to go back to Facebook. I keep myself focused on the Facebook group because it works for me, okay? There's too much going on in YT and other blogs and everything else. I keep it focused. So if you want to ask questions, join up here on MACT Ford Edge on Facebook group. And, of course, if you in Facebook and every place else have not subscribed to YT, by all means, MACT Ford Edge YouTube, subscribe to that. Help me out. Get those numbers up. Yes. And, of course, as with all things, uh, my feet hit the floor today and I'm having a great day. And I want you all to have a great day too. And then, of course, Mercy Girl is going to toss a couple one-liners at you. And I may scrounge up some uh, old footage of me doing really crazy stuff or working on my edge, whatever it may be. But the Band of One is going to make the music while I do it. So remember the Band of One, Facebook group, 
open to the public, look him up. He's got great music. Y'all have a great day, and I'm going to go ahead and end this broadcast before it ends me. Thank you for watching MacT's videos, and remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Go production.